Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is 3klpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very important and fascinating topic the pupil with abnormal reactions the pupil with abnormal reactions cranial nose part 24 oculomotor nose part 10 pupils with abnormal reactions disruption of the afferent that means second nerve or efferent limbs that means the third nerve of the pupillary reflex arcs or the disease of the brainstem pupillary control centers may alter pupillary reactivity to light or near as may local disease of the iris sphincter. So what all pathways can affect the pupillary reaction? One, the afferent, the second now or efferent, the third now, as well as the brainstem pupillary control centers. Diseases of the retina does not affect pupil reactivity unless there is involvement of the macula severe enough to cause near blindness yeah now let's talk about the abnormal reactions what happens if there is second nerve involvement afferent involvement what happens if the third efferent nerve involvement the direct and concentral light reactions so first we need to understand the normal to analyze and understand the abnormal the normal light reflex is that if we throw light on one pupil say right pupil both the right pupil as well as the left pupil constricts the pupillary constriction the ipsilateral pupillary constriction to light is known as direct light reflex the contralateral pupillary constriction to light is known as consensual or indirect light reactions so when I throw light on one eye, example the right pupil, the right pupil constricts because when I throw light on the right pupil, the light passes through the afferent, that is the second cranial now, goes to the optic pathway, lateral geniculate body, goes to the parasympathetic bilateral third nerves. The crossing occurs at two levels, one at the level of the optic chiasma where there is an intermingling of the pupillary reflexes second at the level of the path is going to edinger westphal nucleus bilaterally because there is cross mingling occurring at two places at the optic chiasma and at the edinger westphal nucleus there is not only constriction of the pupil to light on the same side but the opposite pupil also constricts to light when light is thrown on the other eye direct and consensual light reflex because of this intermingling so when we throw light on the pupil, example right pupil, it goes to the second now, goes to both the edinger westphal nucleus and the parasympathetic fibers to both the pupils. So both the pupils constrict. So the pupil constricting to the, the ipsilateral pupil constricting to the light is known as direct light reflex. The opposite pupil constricting to light, which is thrown on the contralateral eye is known as the consensual light reflex. So what happens if the second nerve gets affected? What happens if the third nerve gets affected? So what happens if the afferent pathway, that is the second nerve gets affected? What happens to the efferent, that is if it is third nerve pathway getting affected? So because of this extensive side to side crossing of pupillary control axons to the posterior commissure, light constricts not only the to the pupil stimulated the direct response, but also its fellow, the consensual response. So now what happens if there is afferent path involvement, that is the second nerve involvement. The eye with the severe, we will take the right example, the right optic nerve, the eye with the severe optic nerve, second nerve, will show no direct response, but will have a normal consensual response to a light stimulus in the other eye as well as the constriction to the attempted convergence. So the eye with the severe optic nerve, second nerve, the right second nerve is affected it will not show direct light response if we throw light on the pupil on the right side it cannot contract because the light is not going to the afferent to the second nerve because second nerve is affected 
but will have normal consensual response to a light stimulated in the other eye. But since the third nerve pathway is in, intact, different pathway is intact on the right side, when I throw light on the left eye, the afferent is also intact, the efferent is also intact on the left and the efferent is intact on the right. So when I throw light on the left side, the right pupil constricts. So when there is involvement of the afferent pathway, that is the second pathway on the right side, it will not have direct light reflex because the afferent is gone. But it will have an indirect light reflex or consensual light reflex when the light is thrown on the left eye. So these are the consequences of the afferent involvement, optic second nerve involvement, wherein there is no direct light reflex but consensual light reflex is present. Yeah. Now let us see what happens if the efferent is involved. If the efferent, the pupil frozen because the third nerve patch, that is the efferent is affected, it will have no direct, it will have no near response and no direct or consensual light response, but the other eye will exhibit an intact consensual response on stimulation of the abnormal side. So if the third nerve, that is the efferent nerve is gone, it will not have near response there is no direct response because even if afferent is intact the efferent is affected so there is no light reflex and consensual reflex even if we throw light on the left side also the pupil on the right side does not constrict because the final efferent pathway is gone but the eye will exhibit an intact consensual, consensual response on stimulation of the abnormal side so the but the other eye will exhibit an intact consensual response on stimulation of the abnormal eye. So if the efferent is gone, if we throw light, there is no direct light reflex, there is no near reflex and there is no consensual reflex. But the light can go to the second now and it can go to the, to the third on the opposite side. So there will be consensual light reflex. This is the summary. So these are all the fascinating concepts of direct and consensual light reaction. So, by throwing light on one side and observing the reaction ipsilaterally and contralaterally, likewise throwing light on the opposite side and observing ipsilateral and contralateral contractions, we can make out whether the afferent is affected or the efferent is affected. That is whether the second nerve is affected or the third nerve is affected. So, these are the fascinating concepts of direct and consensual light reflex. The other fascinating neurology concepts, I have put it in a question answer format in a book. Focused Neurology written by me, Dr. S. Srinivas. It is available online from all leading booksellers, including Amazon. If interested, it could be bought online. I hope you have really enjoyed listening to this wonderful lecture. <coughs> Fascinating points. If you have enjoyed it, please like it and share it to your friends. But please subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Srinivas Concepts, Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my web page, Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.